tonight we're joined by billy uh, he's a family member of mine and um yeah he does a lot of youth coaching his family's involved with a lot of coaching in general and whatnot I'm happy to be on obviously i'm a massive bears fan been around um, half of my life as you know is football <laughs> so uh between you know owning the united flag football league and and you know working for the U united youth football league and coaching now uh i'll be coaching 6u because santino's finally uh he just turned five so he wants he, i mean he's all about the football right now he was he was excited yesterday man to turn five this is the first thing he did he woke up I, I can play football now i was like okay hey you're raising the kid right for sure uh you want to tell us a little bit more about the uffl that you run and whatnot it's adult flag football it's i used to play when i was uh in my early 20s oh you know, there's contact non-contact there's uh, it's just it's a wide range from anywhere from four on four to five on five six on six seven on seven eight on eight you can go to unitedffl.com when you go on there there's all you know our email our phone number to get a hold of i'm, I'm co-owner so my my other owner's number is on there so I, you know i register leagues across the country to like today we just got one in toledo and then i run you know we got our january nationals that has been huge 354 teams last year you know the bears i'm dude the last two years has been garbage it's been terrible yeah, yeah they it's been terrible and the fact that there are bears fans that are going around going oh my god well we have potentially this but potentially what there's not a lot to be except there wasn't up until this point to be excited about so i think what most fans are excited about is potential because correct because we did have the first overall pick last year and we were able to trade that back and and gathers a lot of you know treasure from it and whatnot and we want to put another first overall pick this year so you're looking at it as may hey maybe the future is bright here because of what they've been able to build to be in uh, you, listen without all that like say we we don't have the draft picks from carolina we're very average at best oh, right so 100 you were gifted carolina gifted you the number one pick this year normally normally what i would say is trade back get as much as you can trade back but that's what i said last year. you never had 100 you never had that that wasn't your pick your pick is at nine you have to have the mindset that this was gifted to you so just take caleb williams anyways you're gambling with house money you already 100%. won that trade you already oh, won yeah. that trade if you could just top it off with caleb williams oh my god you know what i mean i was a fan of justin fields when he got here <laughs> um <laughs> Early on, I was big on him. I was, like I said, I was making t-shirts, just incredible fields. I saw that. I thought, yeah, I know, right? Hilarious. I saw, I felt his potential and his ceiling was very high. I never thought his floor would be so low. So then I found myself constantly begging, like, hey, let's get this floor a little higher. Let, let's at least pass for 200 yards a game, every game. Like, he just couldn't do it. I want to hear what you have to say on, on the whole Justin Fields era here and and on what you think of Caleb Williams as a prospect coming to the Bears and, and what the future might hold with him as a quarterback. Out of respect for your show. <laughs> out of respect for your show. Hey, you don't need to have any respect. Say what you want, no, man. Speak your mind. No, no. I gave him every single chance in the world. Okay, he looked good this game. He, You know, this game he threw – this game he threw for 300 yards. Okay, well, well, th that didn't happen often. Happened now, once, one yeah, time. Yeah, that's my point. I, I just I couldn't take it anymore. I am a as meathead Bears fan as it gets. I I can't go another game with 160 yards and 100 yards rushing. That is not a quarterback in the NFL. That is not going to win a Super Bowl. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Lamar Jackson is a prime example. And Lamar Jackson has a thousand times more talent than Justin Fields. When the Chicago Bears line was fully healthy, they were like eighth best in the NFL. That's top 10. Well, I so I that excuse, that excuse just get, I don't want to hear that no, anymore. I couldn't go another game seeing him sit in the pocket for four to five seconds because it was many, many instances where he had four to five seconds to throw the ball and he either misses a wide open guy or or he cl triple clutches four times throws the ball you know 
miss, completely overthrows a guy, underthrows a guy. There was times, don't get me wrong, there was times he made incredible throws. But what, I, I need I need more than incredible. I need consistent. I need Patrick Mahomes. Give me Patrick. I want Patrick Mahomes. I'm tired of the Bears losing. There's a, there's a lot of stuff on that team that you're like, man, if we could just get a damn quarterback to come in here and lead the team. And and so you don't think Caleb is that quarterback? I, I think he potentially could be. He is not afraid to throw the damn ball, man. He's not. He's not afraid to throw it. You know, there are there are times where you're watching him and he's, you know, running around, fling, you know, slinging the rock around. But when you watch extended highlights, it, you know, he makes his reads right away and gets rid of the ball. I've seen tape of Caleb Williams where he's making his first read during his drop back. You know, so he's going through it, and mentally it seems like he's there. Everybody goes, well, look at how he did in the Notre Dame game. Oh, okay, come on, guys. What about the, what about the other three years he was in – or two years he was in college when he was throwing for four or 500 yards a game sometimes? I don't, stop with the one-game crap. But Notre Dame – I mean, Notre Dame's defense held, held their own. He looked at – they made Caleb Williams look like crap. But I, I'm sorry, I don't base the guy's entire career on one, one game. I don't. I won't, I won't ever do that. When you watch the tape, when you go and you watch the highlights and the tape and the games where the guy's throwing for 500 yards – He's making his first read, getting rid of the damn ball. You know, he, he's making two, three reads sometimes. Nothing's there. And he goes around and he runs around a corner, makes a play, and he throws a touchdown for 65 yards to a guy who's covered. Got to put it right over his right over his, right over his, right over his shoulder. Go watch the tape. The other thing I do is go watch the tape. If I went one more game with 165 yards and 75 yards rushing, I was, dude, I was, I was going to break my TV. <laughs> Well, I couldn't take it anymore. You no, know, we feel pretty good about Eberflus, or at least that's the overall conception out there amongst the fan base, especially with the new haircut, the new sneakers. Like, the look has changed. And I think that almost has a lot of people more excited than what they did on the field for some reason. You know, at the end of the day, we looked at a season where we got rid of our defensive coordinator in week two for whatever reasons. Um, we knew we should have fired our offensive coordinator by week eight, but you can't you can't sit there and lose your offensive and defensive coordinator in one season and expect to keep your job. It just felt to me like, hey, we were so close to being able to do a complete reset, get new coaching staff in there, go get Jim Harbaugh out there or something, make him a deal he can't refuse, and get the number one overall pick and get a good like it was just so close. Yet we decided to keep Eberflus. We wound up getting some prominent coordinators. Shane Waldron has some history of success in the NFL. Eric Washington has some history of success in the NFL. However, I feel like if we're 0-3 this year, 0-4, you quickly start looking at Matt Eberflus. What do you think about the coaches we have coming into this year, Eberflus and the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator? I, I am absolutely excited about Waldron and Washington. I'm will, I'm definitely willing to give them a chance to see what they do. At no point was I ever clamoring for Eberflus to come back. I, I think he's a terrible coach. I don't I don't I don't understand why they brought him back. Why do you fire your coordinators but keep keep the worst one out of all of them? I, I in my own my that's my opinion. You know I mean a lot of people. Well, uh, you know he grew a beard, so he's you know he's gonna be a great he's gonna be a great coach now. You know and for what? I, what is? I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me what he's done, outside of get, getting a Indianapolis Colts team to an above average defense. That he's a, he's good enough to be a coach in the NFL, because I, because my personal opinion, and I and I'll take this to the to the bank. After he is done being the coach of the Chicago Bears, he will never be a head coach anywhere ever again. I, I think the reason he's kept his job is more situational based off history rather than anything he's done. I think typically teams want to give a head coach three years. And I know we fired like Mark Trustman after two. However, that was a situation where the expectations were high and the product, be, you know, the result was very low. So you looked at it as, hey, you're failing. The expectations here were very low. Mm -hmm. And we've improved. So it's kind of hard to sit here and fire. Like if we got three wins again this year and it matched last year, maybe then you could have made that case where like you're not getting any better. You're not doing anything. But because we won a couple more games and because he's only in year two, I think the situation kind of dictates that, hey, 
you just bring this guy back. But I hear you. I'm with you. I personally would have rather moved on because, in my opinion, coaching could be an issue here moving forward. I just don't understand how you could be sitting in a meeting room and you say, well, I, I personally think that Matt Eberfuss is going to take us to the promised land. Oh, okay. So you got Jim Harbaugh out there who obviously – was available. Why the hell didn't you throw a freaking blank check at him? Is it that you're afraid to get a, a, a big name coach or a, a big name player? Are they you cheap? Know? Yeah, I don't know. I'm of the believing that if I got these two guys in front of me and I say, who's better? <laughs> There's not going to be a lot of people that say, well, we should keep Matt Evil instead of going after hard after Jim Harbaugh. I would venture to say, out of 100 people, 99 would say that <laughs> that guy's better. <laughs> I do. I'll take Mike Rabel, personally. I, I, w- I wasn't against that one either. I, I don't even know why the hell he got fired, to be honest with you. But at the end of the day, you know, again, I, I, I don't understand the thought process. Maybe it came from uh, hires and said, hey, Ryan, we're going to get we're going to get through this coach. You know, just let it play out. And then you, you could get whoever the hell you want after the third year. I cannot understand for the life of me how that they continue to think that a guy like this is a good coach. I I don't either. I mean, the only highlight anything I saw about him was a little clip where he was given where he had like nicknames for every player. Like you, dude, you want nicknames? I'll go in there and give you nicknames. There's plenty of real coaches with history of success. Like you said, I don't know what Matt Eberflus history of success really is. You know, if you're going to replace both coordinators, I just don't understand why not replace the head coach as well. But they, they did what they did, right? Just go after a big name. What's the problem? Are we anti like paying someone? I don't get it's gotta it. Be I, it. It's got to be a financial thing. It's got to be a cheap financial thing because what other reason could there be? I don't know. I, I don't know because I mean, you had a chance to go all in on Jim Harbaugh, and you didn't do it. You didn't do it. You didn't do it at all. Everything I read on numerous websites, reports, granted, again, I don't know if they're true or not. They, like, barely even talked to the guy. Correct. <laughs> how, could you, how could you not talk to him? How, why, how do you not bring him in and say, yo, what's it going to take to be the next parasite coach? Because we'll get rid of this guy. We'll get rid of this guy right now. Oh, well, I mean – the fact that you didn't even really show interest, that's nuts. That's crazy. It's Jim Harbaugh. To me, you know, Cliff Kingsbury was available. I would have taken him as offensive coordinator, especially if you plan on drafting Cam. Oh, you don't got you to tell me, Cliff, everybody knows I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Cliff Kingsbury. Are you? Okay. As a cool. coordinator, as a coordinator, not as head coach. Correct, because he's shown competence and success. And the um, ideology there was, well, what? If you don't do well, you're going to bring in, like, okay, the way Eberflus would lose his job would be if the defense starts giving up fourth quarter leads again and this and that. And if the offense is clicking, you have King, uh, Cliff Kingsbury there, you're going to bring in a guy that could potentially take your job in the future? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, why not? Like, for you to be afraid of your coach taking your job means you suck it to begin with. Like, you shouldn't be afraid. You should want to put the best staff together for the talent you have and hope to succeed with it all and not sit there and make decisions based off of your job security. And it just seems silly to me. I would have loved uh, Cliff Kingsbury to be here, especially if we're going to draft Caleb. I was really, man, I, there, there was one report where I read the Bears are talking to him or I don't know if they interviewed him or whatever it was, but, you know, I was like, man, that would be so awesome. Like Texas, Oklahoma, USC, Alabama mentality. You know what I mean? You just got to have like, some of those guys sometimes, you know, if the guy would have came here and if you would have hired somebody and you hired Cliff uh, Kingsbury and he gets the offense to score 28, 25 points a game or something like that. I mean, how, how could you complain about that? You know, Pick number nine in the draft. Do you have any preference? Do you have a positional preference on what position you'd like to see them draft? Or do you want them to trade back or what, what do you want them to do at pick nine? The long shot that I really th- am hoping for is that somewhere of the the neighbors either neighbors or harrison falls to nine i i don't think that's going to happen you my, said you said people would call you crazy for some of your takes one of my takes is if like marvin harrison does fall to nine i'm passing him up i'm trading back hell no <laughs> i have a guaranteed <laughs> trade partner and a good good haul and, and i'll tell you what the history of top 10 
drafted wide receivers is not very good. Mm-hmm. So I w- I'm inclined to trade back, but I I hear you, man. A lot of people love Marvin Harrison, so well, but that could happen. Like Jalen like Carter wasn't supposed to drop to nine, and he did. Yeah, of so course, you, you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. yeah, and, you know, we passed on him too, and look how good he was. <laughs> the best part about that entire thing was I love it how the you know the reports are coming out that the Bears are thinking about taking him at number one, <laughs> and then you get then you have a chance to get him at nine, and you completely pass on him again. <laughs> Nine, wide receiver cool. three, though it's it's the slot wide receiver you're drafting, which Keenan Allen can play. That's fair. That's a fair opinion. That actually yeah. might be a better fit for him due to his age and injury and whatnot too. So injury right. history. I'm okay with what they have there now if they de- if they decide to not go wide receiver, because then you could just take uh, the kid from Texas is pretty damn good too. But you know so. Th- that could be a later round pick. Kid from season. Texas, you talking about Adonai Mitchell? Yes, I, I honestly think he could be the end up being the Amon St. Brown of this draft class, but I uh, not not the same type of receiver, just where he's drafted end up being the the best. You know, yeah, St. Brown kind of was thing. drafted in the fourth round. Yeah, yeah, which is in, nuts that, that a guy that that good went in the fourth round, but that's not the Tyreek Tyre Hill went in the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not nuts. Like, these wide receivers, they're deep. Well, so, the Notre Dame fan of me is hoping all falls because to get that caliber of a left tackle at nine, I mean, I Alt is unbelievable. I, you're talking, he's definitely the best uh, lineman in the class. It's not even close. But I, honestly, I think they trade back. I think they trade back, get maybe a second or an extra second or a third round pick. I just think uh, I would rather have if one of those guys falls. I don't think you could trade back a Harrison, a Neighbors, a Alt. You know, you get something along those lines. Uh, screw that. Just go with the four picks in the draft and go with those. Go with your, your your top your top the horses that you get in those first two picks. You still have a lot of draft capital next year. You could always trade up like into the second round if you need to with one of your right. third round picks. Right. Correct. And you know, I mean, there's a you know. I, I don't think they move. I think they stay at nine, and you know something falls, and they take them. And they, I mean, you're looking at a Caleb Williams, Joe Alt draft, and you're like, oh, it's it's two good picks in the first ten ten picks. Yeah.